The vision received was that of blood cells traveling throughout the body supplying the much needed oxygen and other nutrients to the differing members of the body to fulfill their purpose. Once the blood cells are spent, they must return back to the heart to be refilled before being sent out again and fulfill their purpose. Hello there brothers and sisters. We are back. We are glad to be here. Uh, we hope that uh, since when last we spoke that you have been blessed um, in your life um, as the Spirit of the Lord has led you and guided you in all of your ways. <clears throat> We'd like to take uh, this uh, segment of our podcast to kind of, um, I guess, springboard from the last teaching. And the last teaching that was released, if you've listened to it, uh, was regarding our Father's heart for family and ministry. And I gave that teaching, I think it was about five or six years ago. Um, and it's something that has developed, uh, at least in me, in my understanding, uh, over probably our the marriage uh, that I've had with my wife uh, now for 23 plus years. And she's here with me right now. Can you say hello? Hello. And uh, we're going to kind of uh, do a special segment where we kind <clears> of <throat> share our the testimony of what God has been doing in our lives over these last 23 years to kind of give some meat, uh, some flesh to to these bones uh, that, that are found in the Word of God. And if you've listened to the last teaching, it really uh, <clears throat> highlighted the roles and the functions that God has ordained for a godly family. Um, it's something that early on before I got married uh, was being uh, shared with me as I listened to uh, a particular preacher out in California. I was listening to a radio um, broadcast that he had and uh it just started in me the desire to have uh, a godly relationship, a godly family. I know uh, several podcasts ago we shared our, our, our testimony of how we came together as a husband and wife. Um, but before we actually got together, the Lord was kind of sharing with me through the scriptures, what should I desire? What should I be looking for in a godly woman? And I shared then that with my pastor, we began to pray specific qualities of, of a godly woman that I desired because I just didn't want to have these, um, you know, these, the, you know, the relationships that, that are youthful and, and not serious, even though they may have uh, wanted to be serious, but because of the immaturity, it really wasn't there. Um, so the Lord was seeding in me uh, the desire for a virtuous woman, a godly woman. And what does what does a godly woman look like? What should a man um, that, you know, professes to be Christian, uh, professes to love the Lord, what should he be looking for if he has that burning desire within himself to be in a relationship uh, with someone of the opposite sex? Um, and... When you look in the scriptures, uh, you'll see very specific characteristics and attributes uh, that should be looked for. And as I look back on the many, many years that I've been married, um, I see us having implemented much of those principles that were taught in the last podcast uh, for our Father's Heart for Family and Ministry and it, we didn't really know it at the time, but because we desired uh, to be led of the Lord, we desired to um, have him, you know, as we make our plans, the scripture says the Lord will direct our steps. I realized looking back that the Lord was directing our steps to develop a godly family. <clears throat> um there, there's several things. There's so many things that have happened in the last twenty some odd years um, in the world. Um, you know, two things that that brought it to my mind recently. Um, 
that I that I've been listening to and kind of uh, talking about with the Lord in in my own mind and my own heart um, as I listen to 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 some other things like other podcasts and and trying to um, get a biblical perspective or or our Father's heart's perspective on on the things that are going on, um, you know. There's a particular county in our country, Loudoun County, um, that have been having trouble in their school system. And one of the major things that have changed over the last 20 some odd years is our school system. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's one of the reasons why the Lord led us to homeschool as long as we did. Um, I know we're going to talk about that because that's kind of a, a big thing for us as we started our marriage. Um, but, you know, it's gotten to a point where early reports right now is that a school system covered up a male student who's trying to be, I guess, a trans woman and possibly seemingly has violated not one student but it seems like two students and it seems like the school system covered up the first one and instead of putting the the child on house arrest like they said they did to the family they actually let that child go to another school and violate another student um and the dangers that are found in our school system have just run rampant over the years. Um, a lot of talk has been about CRT and, and a lot of the, the things that they're teaching to kids at such a young age and exposing them to things that they should not be exposed to. They're, they're ruining their innocence and they're steering them in a direction that is ungodly. It's just foul and it's 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 downright evil that they would do that to to such young children who don't know any better who are not even interested in those type of things you know but that's the day and age that we're living in right now and our kids are not in school anymore i mean they're in college and stuff but the public school system is just it's just gotten to to a a degree that we never imagined anything like that could happen but the other thing that, that comes to mind is, and, and I've, I've been listening to it on the other podcast, and it's kind of influencing you know, the direction uh, of this particular podcast, is how man, and I mean males, fathers in the homes, have been basically emasculated. Mm -hmm. And I remember early on, let me see if you remember, because I'm going to ask you a question now. Um, you know... Early on, we watched more TV than we do now. It's like now we hardly ever watch TV. But when we watched TV, sometimes uh, you would turn on a show that we never really watched, but you kind of just looked at it and you would turn away from it or turn it off. And it was The Simpsons. Do you remember why you turned off The Simpsons? Because I do. It, it made an impression on me, I guess, but it has to do with this idea of what they're doing to men today that bothered you so much over 20 years ago. Do you remember what you said? I don't remember what I said, but I can imagine, I don't even remember watching The Simpsons, but I can imagine that it was that there it was... It could have been just like a, a little, you know, advertisement for the show I, and, I, and it just turned you off. But. I think what would have hit me is just the disregard for the authority, the dad, he was made to be a dumb person. Yes. And the kids were supposedly more in tune to, to, you know, just like they knew more than the dad and the dad was clueless. And I exactly. always had a problem when I saw stuff like that. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you said that 20 years ago and, you know, we never watched The Simpsons. We knew about it. I mean, we watched other shows. We saw the advertising, but we were never watchers of, of The Simpsons. But I, I, I just remember, I remember today that comment you made and it was so like spot on because not only the simpsons but even other shows like yeah. live sitcom shows yeah there was we some... would stop watching them because the man was depicted as this imbecile yeah 
as this idiot in the house. They were funny. They were were, were, funny. Yeah, they were funny, riotously funny. But at the same time, you keep, you know, imparting that to yourself. You keep allowing that seed to gun into your psyche and in your mind. Yeah. You know, that the man is the imbecile and he needs his 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 uh, wife or his mother to run the show and run the house. It's a complete change of the what we've, you know, in the 20th century. And, and before that, it was a patriarchy. Mm-hmm. The man was the lead. He was the head of the home. And 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 the the it, and it wasn't that he was. uh um uh, you know, uh, it was basically historical that way, even biblically historical. It was always the man was leading the home. And in the 20th to 21st century, you saw this reversal, this role reversal, this change, um, you know, from this, basically this uprising of this feminist movement over the last 50 years of the 20th century to where we have the fruits of that today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, even in our house, you know, some of our kids think we came from this conservative time period. And and you you said that to me recently, and I'm like, conservative time period? We grew up in the 60s and the 70s. Those were like the progressives run amok. Mm-hmm. You know, you had the sexual revolution. You had, you know, the the, the rebellion against government authorities and, 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 and all of these uprisings political and social it's like they know better than that you know our kids know history they know better than that but you know they kind of throw that at us and and i'm kind of thinking wow we've been through a lot in the last 23 years well in in their defense they they only see us through the eyes of how we raise them so they see us we were already in covenant with god we already were raising them to fear the lord they don't un- I mean, we talk to them about our past, but it's not a reality to them because they didn't see us live that. They just hear our stories and it's easy to forget what you hear about something versus something that you were part of or engaged in. Yeah. So that, I think that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're definitely, uh, grew up in a different generation, but you know, as the scripture says, um, there's nothing new under the sun. No. It, it might be dressed different. It might be, be different wardrobe, <laughs> different colors. But the depravity of man has been that way. And in some periods of time, it's held more in check. In other periods of time, it's not. But, you know, I think about those two ideas. Um, you know, what's going on in our public school system now, it, it, it's almost, you know, to a degree that we just never imagined. And then the the idea of how... You know, society is just trying to emasculate men and 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 masculinity is called toxic. Um, I, I, I want to kind of venture back into how our our marriage started, how, you know, OK, we got married. If you listen to the to the previous podcast of her testimony, um, but, you know, within I'm going to try to summarize it because we're not going to get fully in detail. Um, but in the first five years, we had three children. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would have had five, but we lost two of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but very early on, it was a honeymoon uh, child, uh, it seems like, because uh, our, our first child came uh, uh, June of 1999. We got married in 98 of August. And uh, 18 months later, we had our son. And then two years after that, we had our our third child. So um, what would you say were the initial struggles early on in our marriage that we had? Um, and I, 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 I tie it to the kids because we had kids so quickly there, soon thereafter. I mean, um, during that time, you weren't done with your school. You were getting your master's. That's right. For education. Yeah. Um, we were, I quit my job uh, when I had, well, I actually took a leave with, with Lydia because I was able to maintain the insurance, I think, for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were pretty clear that 
that I was probably not going to go back full time or um, we had the idea of homeschooling the kids. Um, and so it was really, we had to live by faith. We had just bought a townhouse. There were a lot of financial challenges. There was also external family challenges on my family's part. Yeah. Um, well, let, let's pause right there because that's actually good because um, I think one of the first initial challenges that any marriage has is financial. And the reason why I say that is because when we first got together, <laughs> I was working full time, but I was trying to go to school full time. I was trying to get my master's degree. You'd finished your master's degree, graduated. You were looking for a full time job. You got one and then immediately you got pregnant. And so. What? Well, no, I worked before I married you as a teacher and then. Right. But how long? Half a year, and then the half following year. year I was. Then already, we got married. Yeah. Then I yes. And then before and the that before that year, year yeah. I think you had come out of school for that. Um, so we had for about a year a two income family. Right. And that was nice. But then one of the hardships that brought about with the decision that we made, which we're going to get into in regards to homeschooling, because. You kind of put there that that we had this idea of homeschooling, and it was like, not actually. <laughs> I thought you were going to continue working. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, we were just going to, you know, figure out a way. But I, I, I soon, you know, learned um, that it was going to be really difficult for me to continue working full time, trying to get my master's degree going full time, and then I think I had to pull back <clears throat> there and work part time, um, but. You had this idea, and it's, it's really you, because I, I, I knew nothing about homeschooling. Let's just be honest. I knew nothing about homeschooling. You had a friend that did homeschooling, and that's where kind of the influence came in. Um, and then you kind of presented it to me, and I was like, I think my 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 initial, what, I guess my initial, uh, not aversion, but my initial concern was, can you do it? <laughs> you know, can you, can you like, homeschool them and, and, and really do it and, and do it for as long as, as, as necessary because we didn't really have a limit to it. Um, and we didn't really have a, a, uh, a support system at the time. You know, it was just you and me. And then we, and then very early on in our marriage, we left our, our, our church that we got, <laughs> you know, that we got married in. And uh, so we were kind of alone there, but we had a baby. And uh, we need to figure that out. So you believe that you could do it. You believe that, you know, you had a support system with uh, your friend uh, from afar to kind of give you some pointers, some directions along the way. And, uh, you know, in, I have to honestly say initially I wasn't, you know, gung ho for it. I was sort of like, OK, well, let's see how this plans out. <laughs> um, but after all of these years. I think it was absolutely the best decision that we made for many reasons. Um, you know, we already had concerns about about schooling. I never went to public schools. Um, everybody, well, if you've listened to the podcast, everybody should know I went to private schools all my life. Um, so I, I, but the only taste I had of, of public school is because my mother was a public school teacher and I would hear her stories. And she taught in the inner city in Miami, and she would minister. I would not, let me let me take that backward. She wouldn't minister to them, but she would um, engage with students that were part of gangs in Miami, inner city, um, the Latin queens or or the Latin kings. I don't even remember their names. That's I would assume that's probably what it was since it was in Miami. Um, but you know, she came back with stories of of really hard lives. Um, you know, missing school for violence and drugs and getting pregnant early on. And so the image of a public school wasn't, you know, that great to me. Um, but considering that we decided to homeschool and I figured they wouldn't you know, kind of be exposed to that. And I was kind of okay with that. Um, but it wasn't the easiest road for you. So, you know, how did that kind of pan out for you as you started homeschooling? I, I wouldn't say it wasn't an easy road. I mean, 
to to talk about the challenges first to continue having an income um god blessed me with a reputation so i was able to get tutoring um and pretty well paid tutoring side jobs without trying too hard i was just given a lot of favor with the library that we were a part of they they were they referred people my husband the local public library yeah, yeah my husband ran into a person i don't know and he was talking about me being a teacher and all of a sudden oh yeah i acquired this long term <laughs> i think two years right. student through that was, that that through, was a god thing because yeah. actually i was i was on a they were fixing our car i think and they had to transport shuttle, us, yeah. shuttle us. And I was in a shuttle with several other people. Yeah. And I just got to talking with this woman uh, that was, uh, that I guess needed had needed a tutoring. And so I yeah. shared. So that was yeah. one. And then another one came through my husband um, working at Felix Varela, the high school that he was working at. There was a young man that needed help with English. And mm-hmm. that was another, that one became a two year, I think. A contract kind of I mean they didn't contract me for two years but I ended up working with them for two or three years and then um, in the mix of when we started the homeschooling venture we went to homeschooling conferences and I would say the one thing it was daunting because there was so much out there more than when my friend homeschooled more ideas of things that were um, a fun way to teach which is what I started with uh, um, a whole a whole language approach to I don't even remember the curriculum but it 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 was a curriculum that covered uh, science history English I think music was in it we did a lot of fun stuff it was for pre-k kindergarten uh, because everything was geared towards our daughter uh, my son just started mimicking what I was doing with her mm-hmm. and he started teaching himself how to read he basically taught himself how to read um, and and somewhat write in his way. And then our young, <laughs> you did, yeah. he would just pick as up he, a pencil yeah, and no, just start. As he held a pen in a fist. Yeah, he, I mean, but he could actually <laughs> he would make hold the, it in a fist. He could make the letters write. of his name, and I wasn't trying to teach him that. And then our youngest, um, you know, when she, when she got to where she was walking around, um, because all this was as they were growing up, and you know breastfeeding and the schedule i never had children that slept through the night ever um our son would get up he was easy because he would get up i feed him and he'd go back to sleep but our youngest was colicky she had stomach issues so that was hard and i had to navigate all of that but she when she was i remember when she started walking she was not going to be left behind and everything that her brother and sister were doing Mm. by golly she was going to be a part of it so in our townhouse, our small townhouse, you know, we would go to the park to do a picnic for English something on, you know, some the 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 the, the time of um, the feudal wars and knights and all that. Um, and I had a lot of fun with it, but I won't lie. There, there was an insecurity in me that I was teaching them enough that I was, you know, fulfilling their needs and I was. Uh, getting them where they needed to because family and friends and even church folks uh, were concerned uh, and I put that in quotes about Hmm. the fact that we were homeschooling and um, we had to my husband and I always had to pray and be on the same page as to what direction we were going and even when we would pick the curriculum because okay so here's the deal you're homeschooling you're still paying taxes for a public school but you have to get your own material. So then it was yeah. finding a way to get the material as cheaply as possible. I started learning how to do that. Um, so it was always an adventure for me. Um, it was basically setting up schedules for them when they started getting older and we had to differentiate with their um, with their curriculum. And then when we moved to Georgia, I, I know I'm going kind of fast, the challenge of incorporating more of the Bible with them since they were home with me all the time. So we started doing that. So let's pause there because that right, right there you're <laughs> you're talking about seven years. Yeah, that's a, okay. A, so seven years. I so uh, yeah, seven years in in Miami uh, was difficult financially because we decided to homeschool. That meant we didn't have uh, you know two incomes, um, and that became incredibly difficult because 
even though you had just started teaching, obviously when you just started teaching, even though there's a master's degree, you start at the low end. And then you work for about a year, year and a half. And then you're like, okay, I want to stay home. I want to, I want to raise my kids. I want to teach my kids, not just everybody else's kids. I want to teach my kids. That's my responsibility. Um, and that became, you know, that's something that we realized was biblical. Mm -hmm. Just that desire in your heart to want to raise and teach your own children was actually the biblical way to do it. That's how it had been done biblically right. um, and historically. Um, and that's something that I think we learned over the years that, you know, the responsibility of educating, the responsibility of raising up your own child is solely the parent's. It's not a public school. It's not a private school. It's not a church. The responsibility of raising up godly children falls squarely on the parents. Right. But then also just to balance that out, I had friends that, that, that homeschooling wasn't going to be the best option for them. So we were never the purest of, oh, if you don't homeschool, oh my gosh. We were very... Um, to me who everyone had to pray to see what was best the best fit for their family but we always you know counseled people to be aware of what their children were learning to be a very big part if their kids were in public school to be a very big part of that if their kids were in private school to be a big part of it so yes for me it was fulfilling my heart's desire the lord facilitated it he provided for us financially, even though we might have been stressed out about the finances. In hindsight, we see everywhere that God made provisions for us in so many, there's so many layers of ways that he made provision. Well, you, you talked about a few of them just now. You know, God gave you the ability to tutor as a supplemental income for us. And, and <laughs> they were just coming out of nowhere, coming out of, you know, what some might say, well, that was, you know, circumstance or, or something that was happenstance or chance, Coincidence. you know, but no, it was God actually doing something uh, for our benefit because we decided uh, that that we were going to sacrifice this second income to raise our own children. Um, and you're right. You, you're absolutely right with with the caveat that, you know, we're champions and advocates for homeschooling. I mean, we really are. We'll support anybody who wants to do homeschooling. But we also recognize that not everybody is capable. Not everybody is has has that support system, has the ability. There's so many different family dynamics and environments. I mean, we had a two two uh, a, a two parent household. Right. There's a lot of households that don't have that. But even when you do, you you have to, you know, you have to have a confidence. You have to have a heart for it. So I don't want to like say there's something wrong with you if you don't homeschool because I never wanted to be that person that would demonize, I hate using that word, but that would make somebody feel bad for whatever choice they made. For right. us, the choice was always to be led of the Lord. And there were people that were homeschooling that totally, that was a good choice for them. And God blessed us or me. Um, I had a network of fam of, of women that I met when Lydia was a baby, one, um, and we became a regular um, socialization. Our children grew up together, so it was like one big family. We did a lot of events, so much so that when we left Miami, the kids were, that they were incredibly sad that we left. They're friends, but the thing is, all of my homeschooling friends left. They went to North Carolina. They After we left. Yeah, Florida, but they, they were all Florida. planning on leaving. We, we had been talking about it. Um, we were part group friends. We were field trip friends. Breastfeeding you know, friends. Breastfeeding friends. Baby and me friends. Baby and me friends. <laughs> um, you know, all of our birthday celebrations oh, we yeah. did with them. Um, we had regular, like we live right by the zoo. So we did a lot of, I mean, we just did a lot of ways that the kids met and learned together. We were part of a, um, we were all part of a co-op that worked pretty good too. Um where I, for me, I used it as an extracurricular. So my kids took um, dance and um, art and uh, Spanish, um, little, you know, little group kind of uh, small-sided um, classes. They took dance? 
yeah, that Lydia took praise dance there. Oh, that's right. That's and right. And they oh, have yeah, little yeah. recitals for them. And that's right. The recitals. You know, so so yeah. it was. So we we. It was we very had, enrichment. That, I mean, that, very enriching. So I would say that my one of my big challenges came when we moved to Georgia, because when we moved to Georgia, I was looking for that kind of group that we had in Miami. And that's not the way the homeschool co-ops and the groups ran here. They ran here to be a support system for moms. And I wasn't looking for that because I was fine. I didn't need a support system. I just wanted a place for my kids to recreate and hook up with. It took me a while. I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that I will continue looking for something until I find it. So we found um, science co-ops. We found uh, different things. But in all of it, the, the challenge, you know, it was a blessing and then we were able to maintain um, contact with our friends. We had a reunion. I think we went up to um, North Carolina to meet with them, and they came down to our house. We have pictures of it when the kids were little. Um, so we maintained a, somewhat of a flow with them. Um, so there was a there was a socialization. It's not the same thing as if they would have been in school growing up with the same kids going from elementary to middle school to high school. But we also had them in sports here, so they were playing soccer. They were they were in extracurricular stuff. So so before we move on to Georgia, because Georgia kind of changed our dynamics of homeschooling. Um, just just I guess just to balance out and reiterate uh, the message, we are champions for homeschoolers. We are advocates for homeschooling. If it is run right, it could be a wonderful wonderful thing for the family. But we recognize um, sometimes not everybody's in a situation to do that, and sometimes. They just don't have the gifting or the talent, and they know that. They don't have the patience. They don't have the the skills to be able to teach. And so whatever you do uh, as you make plans in educating your children, it, it could be you doing it hands-on, or it could be you finding someone to do it or finding a, an environment like a school, private, public, a co-op uh, to do that, but parents have to be hands-on they have to be involved they have to be watching what's going on because regardless like i said i've been to christian schools all my life but the experiences that i had in christian schools going up uh maybe not in the early years but definitely when we got into the middle school high school years i mean whatever you heard about or saw in, in in public schools it was happening in private schools yeah I was in a private school, non-denominational, you know, we had our, you know, every Thursday, you know, chapels and all of that stuff, but there was drinking, there was drugs, there was sex, there was, there was a whole lot of things going on that I don't even, I'm not even sure if my mom was aware of the type of stuff that was going on because she just assumed it was a private school, it's much safer, but even that, every parent needs to be as aware of as possible as what's going on in their, in their child, so... Thus is the ministry of our Father's heart through us. Our utmost desire is to be in the Father's heart, to know the Father's heart, and express the Father's heart to you. If you appreciate listening to this podcast and were blessed, pass it along to someone else by text, email, or word of mouth in the hopes that they might be positively impacted as you were. If you are interested in supporting our efforts, we would ask you to consider the following. One, Pray for us. Two, leave a positive rating or review with whomever you listen to our podcast with. And three, if you desire to contribute monetarily, you can do so at paypal.me slash jbenjesus. Or you can cash app dollar sign jbenjesus. Or you can Venmo at jbenjesus. That's J B E N. J-E-S-U-S. God bless.